Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I might call it Tennis with Coaches as we bat ideas and concepts and enthusiasm and interest and intention back and forth. I have already been talking for a few minutes with Renee Russo, who I've already spoken with once and you have probably very much enjoyed. Well, I'm bringing her back again because, well, selfishly, jealously, I just I wanted to talk to her again. Any excuse is great. Let me reacquaint you with Renee. Renee is the CEO of Rise Up Business Coaching Limited. As a certified EOS implementer, she helps entrepreneurs gain control of their businesses through the entrepreneurial operating system. Renee is also a certified exit planning advisor. I just love this role, helping entrepreneurs unlock their wealth and achieve their life goals, building their life by design. Love that positioning. I always have. Renee, it's fantastic to have you back on. I know we talked relatively recently. And it's you know, I'm, you know, it's never too soon, I think, to have a conversation with you. So thanks for coming back on. Thank you, Kevin. It's awesome to be here. Actually, I feel like our last conversation has been resonating with me so much, and Ooh. I'm really, really pleased to be back. Oh, that's great. That's great to hear. It's, I always like will question myself. It's like, am I really having the impact I want to have? And it's like, it's it's very it's very lovely to hear. Thank you for that for that little bit of feedback. I just want to. I like shining light, <laughs> or or amplifying light, or magnifying lights. It's kind of it's it's fun to do. So. Let me let me tee you up and let you go because like like I kind of intimated before I hit record, I just I have complete and utter faith that I can pretty much tee you up on just about any subject and you'll just kind of snap your fingers and be like I gotcha and you could just go broad wide deep every everywhere you want to go. I'm I, I'm excited to see where this conversation takes us. <laughs> I love playing tennis. I love tennis. So let's go. <laughs> All right. Love, love, love. Here comes the service. So obviously, well, not obviously, but we're recording this towards the what is already the end of the first month of 2023, which appears to have flown by for almost everybody I've been talking with over the last month. Very in a, in a very positive way, very full, very busy, a lot of momentum, a lot of intentions formulating into action, a lot of plans beginning to come to fruition. So talk a little bit. We'll start out by how your 2023 has gone so far in that regard. Great. Yeah. So I took my first ever personal retreat from the 25th of December to the 31st of December. Mm -hmm. FYI, it's really cheap to travel on those days. <laughs> uh, I took a book that I underestimated the power of on the trip with me. Mm -hmm. And as I lay on the beach, I opened it up and I found myself immersed in a personal mastery operating system mm -hmm. so i am attention divergent so systems really help me harness my uh, energy focus it and apply it consistently to move towards the goals and the things that matter most to me in business mm -hmm. and i now teach that to business owners that's my job as an eos implementer i help owners apply system to build valuation architect their exit get what they want, live life, their life by design. The piece that I was missing in all of this was the person, the self, mm -hmm. and the importance of personal, personal mastery and understanding of what matters most to me as a human being, spiritually, mm -hmm. emotionally, community, family relationships, what matters most, and having a systematic way about going about achieving those outcomes and what I want to see in my world as a human that's the piece I was missing. And as I opened this book, I felt like I was, it was like moving into a, a whole state of new state of being, new level of awareness. So coming into January, I was coming in hot with the tools and a framework and understanding of what matters most to me. And I haven't let off the pedal ever since. I've always been good at setting New Year's resolutions and having these conversations. The part I've struggled with most is making them stick. What I've realized the piece that was lacking was a, a system to drive the discipline, execution, and focus around what matters most to me as a human. So needless to say, it's been a great start. Bring it on 2023. I really, really, really love that. And I feel like that's all, that might that might even be like a, a, a sub-theme of my week because I've I've had multiple conversations that focus on that distinction, that personal, the really, especially the word personal and how, how key that is to really unlocking like a new level. I was just having a conversation recently about how, or I, I was having a conversation and it occurred to me that very often as we're, as we're looking for systems to execute our intentions and our goals, we often 
take them from outside of ourselves and kind of apply them over top of ourselves. And we kind of like, usually we end up sort of bending and twisting ourselves to fit the system. I say usually, it's a, it's a thing that happens sometimes. Excuse me. I think I inhaled a clot of dust right there. <laughs> Got too excited. And so we were discussing how I think it's very important to realize the power of the personal in setting your foundation and allowing you to really like properly and truly execute a system and really give the form and shape the discipline and intention that you start with. And mm -hmm. I love that you you came across that realization and I love the way it's manifesting and the way you're speaking about it because I could tell that it's like you were already an impressive human being and I talked to you before this realization and I, I, I found you to be terribly impressive. And I love the way that this has shifted and empowered almost like an like an extra light a, a slightly shift in perspective that's opening up a new a new way <clears throat> way forward for you i'm gonna take a drink of water and let you talk i just okay. find it so yeah so fascinating and so empowering I, I i love this common theme this awareness of the self and the person in the midst of all of the living and being and doing that we're all experiencing every day the one common trait or the element that I see showing up as a limiting factor with my clients that shows mm -hmm. up in their business, in their ownership journey is themselves. It's the common mm -hmm. constraint that we're doing a lot of work to control the environment and set it up for success mm -hmm. on all of those levels. But the one area that uh, we are not addressing and that is showing up as a common constraint is the entrepreneur themselves. They're not clear around what matters most to them, what they care about, what they need. And many of them are exhausted, mm. burnt out, <laughs> low state of confidence, low vibration. And I, I've been perplexed by that. Like, how can I show up? How can I show them that they're important and they need to, you know, you know, build their confidence? How can I teach them that they matter? And what I've realized is that if I the self, if I don't matter, nothing else matters. I couldn't agree more. So then I discovered the I matter personal mm. mastery system. And it was like mm. this alignment of like this code unlocked, the blockchain opened up. And now mm. I am like, oh my word, I need to, I need to create the ripples of conversation around this. Because if I don't matter, nothing else matters. And I can be as outbound with my intentions, my focus, my controls, and my systems as I want. But I, at the center, hiding in plain sight is the thing that matters most. You hit me. You use one of my favorite words. One of my one of the words I feel like it becomes more and more central to my to my being personally and professionally. Alignment. That that alignment. And you were talking about how that where you're just the burnout, the grind of it, the exhaustion. And I'm in my head. I'm almost imagining like like sparks coming off of a, of a, of a, of a train that's trying to hit its brakes or something like that, where there's just, there's so much friction and it's just creating so much heat and slowness and, and the wrong kind of fire, like the the kind of fire that burns you out as opposed to, you know, warming and nurturing others. And I think about that and how alignment is really something. And I know alignment, it's a big word. It's a big umbrella under which a lot of other concepts and a lot of other intentions and ideas sort of shelter. But being in alignment, it just, it has such an, an exponentially amplifying effect on everything else you're doing. It's, it removes that friction that's really just kind of grinding you down and burning you out. It puts you closer to being in step with the people around you, whether it's your team, your family, any other relationship you might be having, the people that you work with and for. It puts you that, that, that much closer to being in alignment with them so that you're moving in more in concert and it becomes less of less, less frictional and more like a dance, you know, where you're moving in concert together. Not the same steps, but you're moving with each other. I know I'm starting to mix my analogies here, but less, alignment just less sets off friction, <laughs> less friction, more flow. And Perfect. in order to make the shift from friction to flow, we need an approach. Mm. We need a way to harness that energy, harness that potential and create more flow, remove the barriers, remove the distractions, all of the noise and external mm. forces will always be there. But when mm -hmm. we come into self and we focus that energy and that attention, we can create more flow in our life and align ourselves with all the things that matter across professional, family, friendships, community, purpose. At the center of that is the self. I, mm -hmm. 
And that's where the real work is. I believe going into 2023, we're coming into some level of awareness that the real work is internal. The real work is internal. The mm -hmm. real work is here, hiding in plain sight. We have to get back to basics. And I think that's a message people need to hear because I, I know that a number of people, I, I'm including myself in this, are careful, even maybe resident or, uh, around the idea of working on oneself too much for fear of indulging in self-centeredness. But it's really important to understand how intrinsic, how crucial self-care and self-development is in any good you want to do in the world, any impact you want to have. And I, I, you, you say it perfectly, get back to basics. It starts mm -hmm. with you. It really does. And there, there is, there's, it's not just a way, there's the way to not being selfish or self-centered, but to caring for and developing and working on yourself in a way that's going to unlock everything that you can do for other people, all the ways you can serve and have impact in the world around you. And I, 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 I think that's a hugely important message. I think it always has been, but I think especially in, now in 2023, now more than ever. Yeah, we are really good at telling ourselves stories. Mm. Or maybe I won't put a bunch of time and energy into myself because people might think that I, I'm, you know, stuck up or I'm selfish. Mm -hmm. Or I might become so awesome that my friends won't like me anymore. <laughs> or we tell ourselves I have to do all of these things really well. Otherwise, it's not worth trying. Mm -hmm. What I realized is it's really about starting small and starting early and just focusing on the small important things that really matter most to me. Self-discipline is the greatest form of self-love. You are loaded today. That's great. Less friction, more flow. Yeah. And self-discipline is the greatest form of self-love. Self Those excuses we tell ourselves are self-defeating because at the root, at the core, we don't think we are good enough. So we talk mm -hmm. ourselves out of it. So the way that we offset that belief, underlying belief that we are not good enough is by starting with small things and getting that dopamine response, creating that optimism bias of movement towards things mm -hmm. that make us well. Mm -hmm. And just using that as an iterative developmental process and stop telling ourselves stories that we are not mm -hmm. good enough. It's... And it, it... You make it sound simple, and it is. It's still a challenge, but it is very simple, and it has this capacity. And I don't know if you don't think you use this word, but there's the word momentum popped into my head. That way, that just you just start small, build, build, build from the from the ground up. And there's this. It sounds like it's going to be this huge endeavor, but the energy that's created by these small commitments, these small accomplishments, it just it builds. I mean, I don't want to say it builds itself because it's going to make it sound like it's all I have to do is this beginning part and that's it. But there's just so much of the heavy lifting and so much of the energy and momentum. It's, it's self-sustaining once you commit to the process and commit to the work. That's it. So there's two things that really help with that is in Stephen Covey's work, he talks about begin with an end in mind. Beginning this work with a future state of yourself, even if it's a couple of months from now, in mind something that you're working towards hmm. and then starting small and applying these disciplines in a systematic way. The power of a system is that it only requires a small amount of energy in to mm -hmm. strengthen the system. It actually does become self-perpetuating, self-sustaining if we apply a small amount of energy into the system and follow a systematic approach. So to your point, it does become self-sustaining it starts mm -hmm. with those small changes it really does and it's those, those small changes and those small decisions that go with them that are so crucial because they're small but powerful decisions it's like if i have to i'll just use it as a, like a random example if i have to decide every day to work out or i have to decide every single day or for every meal i have to choose to eat healthy that that that's a lot of self-discipline and that's a lot of active choice and that's a lot of high level brain function and that that can seem very daunting and exhausting, but if I commit myself to a system where it's like, okay, here's the system, it's you know work these kinds of workouts three times a week, these kinds two times a week. Here's the here's a meal plan, you know, here's a here's here's some here's some metrics to hit, here's some time to eat. just there's a plan laid out for me. I can make the decision to adhere to that system, 
and then just continue to decide to say yes to that decision, to say, yes, I'm going to adhere to this system. I'm going to follow this system. I'm going to do what the system says. I don't have to make a decision every time. I don't have to exercise my discipline for each individual act because the system's carrying that weight for me and amplifying the power of that small decision at the beginning. And I just, it's so, I mean, I, I'm talking, I'm saying it out loud. It's so empowering. I'm almost feeling like I want, I'm like, I feel like once we're done with the call, I'm going to like sit down and journal on some, on some systems and ambitions that I have. How can I apply a new system to like these endeavors? I'm like, I'm getting very motivated just talking about it. It's very exciting. <laughs> okay. At the risk of blowing up this session, this pod, pod with too much information, because that's kind of my MO, too much information. I love it. I recently found myself looking at the story of the men's British rowing team that won gold in the 2000 Olympics in Sydney. So they had not won a medal for nearly 90 years at mm -hmm. the Olympics. Their coach, Ben Hunt, brought in a concept. And in psychology, it's called an implementation intention. Mm -hmm. He brought in the ethos of the with a single question, does it make the boat go faster? So the team all knew what the vision was. The outcome was to win gold in Sydney. It was an impossible feat in their mind and in the eyes of everybody else looking in. But they used this implementation intention every day. They asked themselves, does it make the boat go faster? So going to the gym and staying on the rower for an extra half an hour, does it make the boat go faster? Yes. Going to the pub, eating fried food and having beers on Friday, does that make the boat go faster? No. So they didn't do it. And every single day, every single decision was based on asking themselves that question. Does it make the boat go faster? And so we don't have to do it all perfectly, but if we understand what we want to work towards, it could be, I want to have 10 more, 10% 10 more energy at the end of the day to enjoy time with my wife in 90 days from now. So every day I know all the things I should do, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of things going on. But if I know that I had that simple question that I asked myself, does it make this boat go faster? Does it move me towards what I want? Yes, then I do it. If it doesn't, I don't do it. I can politely say, I understand that's a priority for you. I understand that's a, a thing I could do. But in order to move myself forward to the, the vision that I've created for myself, if it doesn't move me forward, I don't. And it can be as simple as that. I feel like I'm ready to run through a brick wall right now. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just like... Yes, <laughs> that's but it does start with recognizing that I matter. Exactly. Understanding what matters most to me and willing to honor myself with that simple question every day. That mm -hmm. does require some work, some preparation, some discipline, willingness to fail mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. not derail the whole plan and just calibrate on a daily basis with daily disciplines, weekly disciplines, quarterly practices that move me forward towards what matters most. I, you know what? I think I, that, I think that's the perfect note to end the the conversation on the episode on, even though it's, it's, I could, I, I want to keep talking to you for hours, quite frankly, I'm feeling like, but I'm also feeling so motivated to, to, to action <laughs> that I also just want to be, I want to say goodbye and just like start doing something. <laughs> this, <laughs> That was, that was, I, my expectations for this conversation were already high. You managed to exceed them comfortably. That was, I don't, mean, I don't mean to blow too much smoke up your butt, but that was just fantastic. Thank you that you shared so much, so succinctly with so much impact, with so much more to unpack later. It's, you know, I can, I can see why you are who you are and why you're as successful as you are. <laughs> so thank you. I, that's pleasure. a long way of saying thank you very much for this conversation. This has been fantastic. <laughs> you are worthy. Thank you. And oh, also, I was just going to close out. If people want a little bit to learn a little bit more about you, what you do, who you are, maybe connect with you, reach out to you, DM you on some platform, where what's the best way for people to do that, to learn more about you and to connect with you? So my company is Rise Up Business Coaching. It's riseupbc.com. As you can tell, I'm very passionate about the space of personal mastery. It's the third system that I teach, one for business, one for building value and the, the system that I'm running is called I Matter, Personal mm. Mastery. It's captured in a book called Unscatter the Chatter, written by mm. one of my 
favorite humans, Bob Schenefeld. It's hmm. brand new. It's uh, like get a copy. It's hot off the press. I am so honored to be able to use this system myself, hmm. but to potentially share that and change the world. It's a revolution and I'm really, really excited to be on this journey. So riseupbc.com, unscatter the chatter of the book. You'll find us. I'll, I'll, make, I'll make sure the links are in the show notes too. I'll, 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 do, I'll do a little light Googling and make sure that the, I'll, I'll make it the shortest possible distance between here and there on people's journeys yeah. as they find Low it. Low calorie burn. Low calorie <laughs> burn. <laughs> you got it. You got it. Well, Renee, man, once again, thank you. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Kevin. And to the audience, I mean, you, I, I imagine you're very motivated right now. So I want to encourage you to be motivated to find out more about Renee, <laughs> find out more about all the links will be in the show notes and we will have the great, great fortune of talking to you again here very soon.